I'm back from DEF CON, and this is ThreatWire. First and foremost, a huge congrats to Sam Watson, son of hacker Ray Redacted, on winning the Olympic bronze and breaking the world record for speed climbing. It was awesome to follow Ray's tweets of Sam's progress during the Olympics. The entire hacker community was so invested. A huge mazel tov. DEF CON this year was a smashing success. Thank you to everyone who came by the Hack5 booth and to those who said hi to me. It was awesome to meet everyone. If you didn't get a chance to see me or come by the Hack5 booth this year, I'm sorry we missed you. I am going to leak a little secret, but next year is the 20th anniversary of Hack5 and we will be doing some awesome celebrations at next DEF CON. You won't want to miss it. Also, a huge thank you to the team over at Miscreants for making these awesome custom shirts for us. They turned out amazing. I'm not wearing mine because mine is in the wash, but it's awesome. Thank you so much, Sean. One cool talk the community wanted me to point out while writing the script was the talk by the Unsafe Lock Project. Based on their created installer, using just one RFID key for a hotel, they're able to create a master key for every RFID lock in said hotel. The specific kinds of locks that are affected are all of the locks from the safe lock system, which they estimate to be on over 3 million doors across 13,000 properties in 131 countries. The process for fixing the vulnerability they found started in 2022, and they announced their findings at DEF CON. Congrats to the team. On August 14th, Microsoft released a critical Patch Tuesday update for resolving a TCP IP RCE. This exploit, CVE-2024-38063, is a zero-click vulnerability that affects all Windows systems that use IPv6. All of them. The exact functionality of how this vulnerability works has not been disclosed, as the researcher behind this work, Zhao Wei, has said, considering its harm, I will not disclose more details in the short term. We love a responsible bug disclosure. According to the Microsoft website, the actual vulnerability uses an integer underflow that is exploited by unauthorized attackers by repeatedly sending well-crafted IPv6 packets. This was given a CVSS score of 9.8. That's pretty high. As a reminder, as we do with every major vulnerability, please be sure to update your Windows systems and pay your tributes to the CVE of the week. At Palo Alto Networks has exploited GitHub actions in order to force push code into public projects. The attack takes advantage of artifacts, outputs of GitHub actions that can contain a variety of information, including compiled code, test reports, and more. GitHub Actions workflows frequently use secrets to interact with various cloud services and with GitHub itself. These secrets include the ephemeral automatically created GitHub token used to perform actions against the repository. The actions build artifacts are outputs generated by the execution of workflows and once created, they're stored for up to 90 days. In open source projects, these artifacts are publicly available for anyone to consume. As of the fourth version of the artifacts feature released by GitHub in February, artifacts can be downloaded while a GitHub action workflow is in process. This early access is how the researcher was able to achieve their exploit. The attack uses the GitHub token value from an artifact of an action that hasn't completed. During the processing, the short valid GitHub token has excess write permissions and can be automated to run and execute a malicious push to the main repo. Once the processing of the action is done, the GitHub token is no longer valid and the attack cannot be executed. This attack takes advantage of good lockstep and good timing. This research has led to major safety patches in projects from companies like Microsoft, OWASP, Ubuntu, and Google. Palo Alto Networks has released a GitHub action that scans artifacts for the GitHub token value in it before uploading. It's available on the Palo Alto Network GitHub right now. Thank you so much for watching ThreatWire for the week of August 19th, 2024. If you want to support this ad-free show, head over to patreon.com slash ThreatWire and support us there. Thank you so much. The Hack5 team is feeling super motivated now that DEF CON is over. And I'm curious, beyond ThreatWire, is there any new content you might want to see appear on the channel? I can't guarantee everything is made, but I would love to bring some new ideas to the table of content that the community would like to see. I know I've seen some of these replies in the past, so I look forward to seeing your replies. If you want to find me online, you can find me everywhere at Ending with Allie. Good luck, have fun, and don't get caught.